Hey everybody and welcome back to the Motor One channel where today we're getting our first drive opportunity with the all new V8 powered Jeep Wrangler 392. We're gonna drive it on road, off road and have a ton of fun. So let's go check it out. I'll make this a quick walk around I promise because I know you wanna see this thing on the road and I wanna drive it as well. I'm gonna point out a few things uh, to help you distinguish this from other Wranglers on the road. Subtle changes but enough to make it stand out. This is a new wheel and tire package. So these are 17 inch wheels and 33 inch tires. This is how it's gonna come standard. I believe they said there will be more wheel options down the line, if not at launch. Obviously we have the big hood scoop with the 392 badge on either side. That's the most obvious way of distinguishing this uh, as the V8 powered Wrangler. The hood scoop itself is actually pretty cool. Jeep couldn't just do a normal one because this still has to trudge through a ton of water. So instead they designed this really cool intake that diverts water down so the engine only drinks the air. Then we have the bronze accents. You see it on the 392 badge, but it's also on the tow hooks. And then as we go around to the side of the Jeep, we have it on the Jeep badge itself. And then there's a really neat bronze touch to the, the trail rated badge that of course uh, all of the Wrangler Rubicons get. Other than that, it looks like a Wrangler. It's pretty obvious to say. I guess in the rear, you can tell because there are quad exhaust chutes. Uh, this does have a sport exhaust, which is just hilarious. And we pretty much spent the entire day with the sport exhaust toggled on it. It's so much louder and you can hear it that much better. Well, there you have it. There's a quick spin around with the 392. Now let's get it out on the road. Driving a Wrangler with a V8 under the hood. First order of business. <laughs> All right, uh, there's hopefully gonna be a few more of those. Wrangler 392, what are we in and, and how did we get here? Well, if you ask Jeep, their customers have been begging for this for years. They've been going to garages and professional builders and they have been swapping V8s into these things all on their own. And when they do that, they normally end up with a bill for over $100,000. So now, from the factory, starting in the mid $70,000 range, you can get a fully warrantied Wrangler with a V8. And it's a good one. 458 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. Uh, and the first sensation you feel It's a Wrangler with some guts. This is not meant to be like a TRX. Jeep was very clear about that. Funny thing is, this car is actually limited to 99 miles per hour top speed because of the wheels and tires that are on it. So this isn't some crazy fast trophy truck desert running thing. No, it's still meant to do all the Jeep things, which we're about to do in a bit, the rock crawling, the slow stuff, and be just as capable. The difference is on the road, you get a little bit more thunder. From a mechanical standpoint, there are some differences compared to the Rubicon. This is actually an inch taller compared to the Rubicon. This has a 10% stiffer front suspension setup compared to the Rubicon. Weirdly enough, a 20% softer rear suspension setup. So they made some adjustments, but Jeep says that was the sweet spot for the ride and handling sort of give and take scenario. In terms of on-road performance, it's not all that different from other Wranglers in the handling department, I have to say. Uh, Wranglers have a notorious dead zone, and the engineers with this one said that they actually made the steering a little bit more light and relaxed at slow speeds, and then at high speeds, it's supposed to pick up and get a bit more feel. I, I don't think I agree with that too much. There's never a ton of heft to the feel and when you're on 33 inch tires there's only so much sensation that can come back through the steering wheel it'll drag race um, but that's basically what you're limited to i mean you have so much grunt and that's a thing that you're just not used to in a wrangler that's that's not how they roll but to have the immediacy from the throttle and to not have to dig way deep into a torque band to get power out of this thing, it's just addicting. 
you're gonna pay for it when your gas bill comes, but I guess if you're buying this car, you probably don't care too much about that anyway. In addition to the suspension tweaks, the brakes are actually different on this compared to a Rubicon. It uses the brakes from the Gladiator Mojave in the front, and it uses the brakes from the 4xe Wrangler in the rear. Uh, Jeep said they didn't want to go through a whole process of developing a new braking system, and because the top speed isn't any higher, they didn't have to go through a whole process of building crazy performance brakes. But they said that was the right setup in recalibrating those two parts bin items to get the braking feel right. Yeah, I, I guess when it comes to driving this thing on the road, I thought it would be a bit different. I thought it would be a little stiffer uh, and a little more tightened up like what you find in a Trackhawk or what you'd find in a TRX. That's not really the case. Th this drives just like a regular Wrangler, just like a Rubicon. From a handling standpoint, the difference is you just have absolute fury under your right foot whenever you want it. We're not done today. We're gonna go do some off-roading now, uh, one of Moab's most famous trails. So I'm excited to see how the engine does five to 10 miles per hour. I guess what's tripping me out more than anything right now is just how capable this car is out of the box. And with all the kit that's on it, we're just absolutely destroying these approach breakover departure angles. I mean, these little rock formations it's attacking it like there's nothing in front of it. We also have this off-road plus mode. And what that's going to do is cushion the throttle application a little bit. So this has a very quick and immediate throttle response on the road with that V8, but you toggle this off-road plus on, cushions the throttle a bit, lets you put your foot more in the pedal without the car getting all jumpy and jerky. It makes it a lot smoother and a lot easier to approach obstacles. We also have this feature for select speed. And what that does, I'm using it now, in 0.6 mile per hour increments, lets you increase and decrease the speed as you wish. And because this is the first Wrangler to have paddle shifters on the steering wheel for obvious reasons on the road. Off-road, you can select your speed just by toggling the paddles. Well, this is not a small obstacle at all. That was a ton of fun. That was, that was quiet, but that was a ton of fun. It's nice to have uh, pro spotters too, for a non-pro like me. I'm just so impressed by how easy it is with the throttle application. It's not twitchy, it's not jerky really well mannered and controlled. So there you have it. There's a quick spin on road and off road in the Wrangler 392. This is a big deal for Jeep and it's a time for the Wrangler where things are crazy evolving with electric concepts and plug-in hybrids. But now we finally have a V8 powered Wrangler from the factory and obviously it's a ton of fun. As always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like and subscribe to the channel and be sure to follow us on Instagram as well at motor1com.